Geo. Fought Chicago, first to speak with Alderman Ike Carruthers after his indictment. What are people saying to you when they call you? We're asking the questions. You wore a wire for a year. Any comment on that? It's not fair. Were hundreds of students admitted to the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana because they knew powerful politicians? And what's the university saying about it? Next at 9. John. Fox Tuesday, Dr. Gallagher treats a pregnant woman. She fainted when contractions started. She has hormone levels that are raised. Who's delusional? What's wrong with this picture? I don't get it. I can't even see a baby. There is no baby. But there's more to this case than meets the eye. We know what happened, Melissa. I'd rather not talk about it. How far can a delusion go? My wife is seven months pregnant. This baby could be in distress. And where does the truth lie? My water just broke. All new Mental, Tuesday at 9, 8 central on Fox. First on Fox tonight, the word from Springfield, Governor Quinn's tax increase is dead on arrival. Good evening, I'm Robin Robinson. And I'm Jeff Goldblatt. Political editor Jack Connolly looks at why the hike hit a brick wall and what this all means for the battered state budget. The governor wants a vote on his income tax increase. He's even offering to make it temporary, but he doesn't have the votes here to get it passed. The most important man in Springfield on the most important issue of the day. Are we going to get a vote on the tax increase today, Mr. Well, we're going to meet with the governor shortly and we'll address that question. Do you have the votes, do you believe, for a tax increase? Well, that's the question we'll talk about in the meeting. Can you hold that elevator? When you talk to the governor, this is what you hear. This is not a garden variety recession. We haven't had a budget deficit like this in the history of our state. We, as a people working with the General Assembly, have to do what's right to keep our state afloat in tough times. But tough times make for tough choices, and red ink or not, some Democrats won't vote for a tax increase. I think that in this particular point in time when there really is a very tough economic climate, we cannot simply have a large tax increase without also showing the public that we're doing some belt tightening first. And for Republicans, an income tax increase is out of the question. Again, I think we've said from day one to raise taxes in this economy is uh, counter counterproductive. And I think, you know, Illinois families are doing on getting by on less and government needs to get by on less but without a tax increase hundreds of state funded programs are in jeopardy from substance abuse treatment to meals on wheels i think that there is a large percentage of illinoisans who are feeling the pain but it may be and and the problem with feeling pain is that they're so far away we don't really hear them here the income tax increase may get a vote tomorrow but for now it appears doomed too many lawmakers consider it risky Risky, and they're afraid of voter backlash. Jack Connerty, Fox Chicago News at the state capitol in Springfield. Here's the bottom line as lawmakers scramble to get their work done. The state faces a deficit of more than $11 billion. Governor Quinn does not support a partial budget to solve part of the problem. The state Senate has passed an ethics reform bill, even though the special reform commission handpicked by the governor says it doesn't go far enough. The House has yet to vote on the ethics package. The current legislative session is scheduled to expire on Sunday. Later in this newscast, we're going to talk with Republican State Senator Matt Murphy of Palatine. We're going to get his thoughts on the budget, taxes, and ethics reform, and if the work will get done this weekend. Police shot and killed a school bus driver following a chase through three southern suburbs. They say the driver had an argument with his manager this morning at the bus company in South Holland then stole the bus. The driver rammed several police vehicles and other cars before coming to a stop in Glenwood. Finally, police say they ordered him to get out of the bus, but that instead he tried to run down the officers and that's when they opened fire. Anytime you have a bus that's, you know, fleeing from police at 65 or so miles an hour is a deadly weapon. And anytime you point that bus at an officer and drive it toward an officer or a civilian or anybody else, it's a deadly weapon and the officers used the appropriate force necessary to terminate his actions. A school bus monitor was also on that bus, but she was not hurt. A community takes aim tonight at gang violence. Marchers walk the streets of one Chicago neighborhood to drive gang members out of their community. Steve Shamras is live on this one on the city's west side at District 10 Police Headquarters. Steve? Jeff, people in the Pilsen neighborhood are worried this could be a violent summer. So tonight, they took to the streets of their neighborhood, sending a message to anybody thinking of causing trouble where they live. 
Hundreds of marchers marched through the streets of the near south side neighborhood. They wanted to do more than just challenge the gang members who threatened their community. Their challenge also went out to parents who need to keep close tabs on their kids once school lets out next month. They also are challenging the kids themselves so they make smart decisions if they should run into trouble this summer. We keep an eye on them. We talk to them about, you know, what gangs are and, and how bad it is so they understand the situation. I mean, eventually they're going to have to make their own choices, but we have, if we, we're guiding them, my wife and I are guiding them on an ongoing basis. It's the kids killing kids, as it was mentioned earlier. It's something that can be easily solved only if people will realize how easily the solution can be. But if you hide, they'll never, they'll never know. One of the crimes on the minds of marchers tonight was the murder of 15-year-old Alex Arellano earlier this month. He was shot, beaten, and burned. The suspects in that case, both teenagers, the victim, only 15 years old. One of the motives believed in that case was gang intimidation. Tonight, the community is hoping they are intimidating the gangs back. Live at District 10 tonight, Steve Shamraz, Fox Chicago News. Chicago police seized $18 million worth of marijuana in a huge drug sting on the city's southwest side. Investigators say narcotics officers watched a small drug deal take place, then found more than 2,500 pounds of pot in a nearby garage by 64th Place in Menard. The officers also seized more than $11,000 in cash. Four people are under arrest. Six cars also impounded. Updating a story we first told you about last night. Five people wounded in a drive-by shooting in the city's back of the yards neighborhood are all going to be okay. The victims range in age from 15 years old to 24. It happened at 53rd and Holstead in a vacant lot. Officers say they have no leads or suspects, but they say the shootings do appear to be gang related. Alderman Ike Carruthers talked to reporters today for the first time since his indictment on federal fraud and bribery charges. Larry Yellen is live from City Hall with this one. Larry? Jeff, tonight Ike Carruthers has to be worried about more than answering to federal corruption charges. He may be worried about answering to his colleagues after it appears that he has been secretly recording their, his conversations with them for the feds here at City Hall. Well, it's a difficult time. Certainly, it's difficult for anyone. But, uh... We'll, uh, we'll get through it. Indicted Alderman Ike Carruthers today refused to comment on these documents filed by the U.S. Attorney's Office, which suggests that a public official A, apparently Alderman Carruthers, has been secretly recording conversations with other public officials and real estate developers for the last year. No, no comment on that. The documents regarding Carruthers' cooperation were kept secret until yesterday when Carruthers was charged with accepting bribes from real estate developer Calvin Bunder. U.S. Attorney Patrick Fitzgerald would not confirm or deny whether secret recordings were part of the investigation into Bunder or others. There's nothing referenced in the indictment as to whether there's undercover videotapes or tapes. Carruthers is accused of pushing for a zoning change to help Bunder develop Galewood Yards on Chicago's west side. While failing to disclose $40,000 worth of home repairs, Bunder provided as bribes. These are some serious allegations, and certainly I um, want to treat them very seriously. Uh, on advice of counsel, uh, I've been told uh, uh, I shouldn't talk about the case. But Carruthers wasn't the only politician lobbying on Bunder's behalf. Congressman Luis Gutierrez sent this letter to Mayor Daley, saying that the mayor should not consider Bunder, quote, a bad guy. I absolutely refute this characterization. Gutierrez had once borrowed $200,000 from Bunder to help purchase a new home. Congressman Gutierrez and his staffers did not request, did not return our calls today. In the past, he has said that his dealings with the developer, Calvin Bunder, were fully disclosed and appropriate. Live at Chicago City Hall, Larry Ellen, Fox Chicago News. Jeff? Larry, being our legal analyst, let's say that these recordings are indeed a fact, that Carruthers was wearing a wire. Would this automatically be admitted into evidence at any other trials if they were to go to trial? Not necessarily. They have to pass the scrutiny of a judge who would decide that they were done appropriately. Then they have to be determined to be relevant to those particular cases. They just can't go out and wear a wire and hope that they can admit that as evidence in any case that happens to come up at the Dirksen building. It has to be relevant to that case, and the recordings have to have been done appropriately. And you can bet that defense lawyers will say that the feds went beyond the legal boundaries in uh, having him make these recordings. Hmm. Good explanation. Thanks very much, Larry. Okay.
After two years of court trials, music producer Phil Spector will spend at least 19 years in jail. Spector showed no emotion in court today as he was sentenced for the murder of actress Lana Clarkson. She was shot and killed in Spector's home six years ago. Clarkson was best known for her role in the cult classic movie Barbarian Queen. Spector also has to make restitution payments in addition to his prison sentence. His attorneys are planning an appeal. Spector's first trial ended with a deadlocked jury. As Chicagoans, we're used to hearing about clout at City Hall. But clout at college, students at the University of Illinois getting a life lesson about what the right connections can mean, even at that school's hallowed halls. Mixing business and pleasure, President Obama attacks cybercrime, then takes a lunch break that surprised a lot of people. On the Weather Watch, a decent start to the weekend. We had 74 degrees this afternoon, still pretty mild out there. If you're south of Chicago, look at the temperatures. Lakefront, a big cool down as a front slid through town. 47 in Waukegan, 59 at O'Hare, and still in the mid 60s to the south. Tomorrow morning, a mix of clouds and sun and temperatures in the upper 50s. One day is better than the other. I'll have the weekend forecast after the break. And later, remember this videotape, an off-duty Chicago police officer seen attacking a female bartender. He's expected to go to trial next week. Why some say that could be a mistake. Our special report around 9.30. She doesn't believe in snoozing or losing. She knows at Kohl's Super Saturday Sale, she'll find over 100 early bird specials between 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. She'll get early deals on bras, fine and sterling silver jewelry, 50 to 60% off sandals, savings on Junior's fashions, and 50 to 60% off men's and Missy's apartment nine. Wake up early and get to Kohl's Super Saturday Sale starting at 7 a.m. Set your alarm. Kohl's, expect great things. Welcome to the show. As you could call it, drive-through bankruptcy. General Motors ready to swallow that bitter pill, but it might not need the protection of bankruptcy for long. What's ahead for GM? Most likely later in our Money Wise segment. The University of Illinois went into damage control mode today in the wake of the revelation that politically connected students got into the university over other applicants with more qualified resume. A school spokesman says just a handful of students got this benefit, but many see this all as blatantly unfair. Considered a great education for the money, the flagship campus of the University of Illinois has increased its standing in recent years, given its rich academic traditions, without Ivy League tuitions. This year, the Urbana campus got 26,000 applications for about 7,000 spots. So news that politicians possess clout in admissions decisions doesn't sit well with rejected applicant Brad Bunt. If I find out I had better GPA and test scores than them, I'd be really, really disappointed that they would do something like that and shut out people that I think were more than qualified to get in. After the Chicago Tribune out of the university, it's come forward to admit it keeps a watch list for tracking a select group of students. We're talking the well-connected here with ties to politicians and trustee members. These kinds of uh, tracking lists are uh, in place uh, at a lot of different institutions. They do serve a purpose. They do have value. Certainly valuable for a relative of Tony Rezko, the convicted fundraiser for ousted Governor Rob Blagojevich, who, according to the Tribune, reaped the benefits of the school's watch list. The paper says the student jumped the line to gain entry over more qualified students. You have all those long hours of studying, you have those days you're in class, learning, I mean, it's just a, really a lot of work, and that's not fair, right. just point blank, it's not fair. I'm trying to get into med school myself, I'm trying to work as hard as I can, if somebody gets the advantage just because they know somebody on the admission board, doesn't mean they should get the advantage of getting into school. The university's president says just because the school tracks certain students doesn't mean there's pressure to admit them. In a statement, he wrote, quote, all admissions to the University of Illinois should be based on merit. There will be many inquiries of support and interest for applicants, including from powerful people. But it is our job to manage a merit-based system and not succumb to pressure. The university is vowing a complete investigation of its admission policies. And if you'd like to see some of the so-called cloud emails sent to university staff, we have posted copies online at myfoxchicago.com. So before we get too high and muddy on this one, on the question of clout, we're asking you this question. Right or wrong, as a parent, 
You would pull strings to get your child into a good school. All right, log on to MyFoxChicago.com on this one to let us know and leave a comment on our message board if you would. Or you can text the word right or wrong to Fox32, that's 36932. Results, of course, later on in this newscast. The White House looking to do some damage control regarding President Obama's nominee for the Supreme Court. Presidential spokesperson Robert Gibbs says he thinks Sonia Sotomayor would have chosen her words more carefully during a 2001 speech. Back then, she said a female Hispanic judge would often reach a better decision than a white male judge. Gibbs says he thinks Sotomayor might rethink using the word better in that sentence. Keep in mind the comment came during a lecture titled A Latina Judge's Voice. Sotomayor heads to Capitol Hill next week to start meeting with senators who will vote on her confirmation. President Obama says the nation's computers and internet networks need better protection from hackers. The president says he personally has been victimized that his presidential campaign computer system got hacked. So the commander in chief says with a new age comes a new position and today he announced plans to create a new cyber czar in charge of combating cyber threats. We will ensure that these networks are secure, trustworthy and resilient. We will deter, prevent, detect and defend against attacks and recover quickly from any disruptions or damage. It's not clear what kind of authority this new cyber czar is going to have. The president says he's going to appoint someone to the post very soon. You work up a pretty healthy appetite. We're in the leader of the free world. So President Obama today stopped into Five Guys. That's one of his favorite burger joints in the nation's capital. The president, who arrived in his motorcade, ordered a burger and fries for himself, then bought burgers for his entire entourage. He chatted with customers waiting for their orders, posed for a group photo, then grabbed his bags to go. I bet they didn't even complain if he jumped the line, which he probably did. That's a good place. <laughs> they actually let you throw peanuts on the floor there. I know because I grew up in D.C., so it's a good place. I think we have that uh, thing in our uh, neighborhood. I five think. Five, five <laughs> the burger <laughs> joint? There's some sort of burger uh, joint that's... I, I've heard it's expanded in Oak Chicago. Park. Yeah. Do we have They're, they're never as good when they go to I don't know. <laughs> five guys, we have it, don't Aren't we? Aren't you here, we do, we you're here to do park. the weather, right? Not the hamburger <laughs> review? <laughs> <laughs> they go and eat I'll outside or inside I'll have to check it out this weekend. I'll have a full report for you next week. Thank you. All right, as we get started tonight, decent weekend ahead. We started uh, off pretty nice this afternoon. A cold front came through, took our mid 70s down into the 50s. But if you're along the North Shore, temperatures have slipped into the 40s. It was really chilly, so cool in some spots. The blimp, we were on its tail this afternoon. We had all our cameras set up. Uh, tracking it across the area, so they got some good advertisement, at least as far as Fox Chicago goes. We were watching them pretty carefully as they went in and out of all the buildings. I think it was a direct TV blimp, so they get their advertisement tonight, but uh, pretty cool to see. Yeah, there it is. Beautiful Lake Mission, great visibility across the area, and some boats getting out and about. As we get started tonight, a live picture will look across the area, and a few clouds in and around the area will help keep our temperatures not quite as cold as they are off to the north. So with temperatures in the upper 40s, but we should slide into the low 50s without any problem at all. Really beautiful picture here of the city skyline all lit up. Live power Doppler tonight. The only place to see live streaming radar online for the upper Midwest is Chicago. MyFoxChicago.com. We've got a 300 mile radius and the most powerful radar in the Midwest. Lucky no showers around here, but a few wrinkles in the forecast. Before we get to the numbers that we're looking for for both Saturday and Sunday, a look at what's happening to the south and east of us. So we've got the satellite imagery up tonight. Now I wanted to check in with the East Coast because the tropics are starting a little earlier this season. Now we've seen some uh, tropical waves moving out, so hurricane season officially starting on June 1st, but the East Coast all lit up tonight. A disturbance is well offshore and it's going to continue to pull out to the east, but if you're doing any traveling this weekend, they are certainly contending with some big showers and thunderstorms, and it's due to a storm that came out of the tropics. All right, as we get going, here's what we can expect for our weekend. It's going to be a cool night tonight, much cooler to the north than it is to the south. A slight risk for an afternoon thunderstorm tomorrow, mainly south of Chicago. A beautiful Sunday. Sunday is definitely the better day of the weekend. Here's the numbers and the stretch that I'm talking about. 47 of Milwaukee, while mid to upper 60s still down to LaSalle, Morris, uh, 59 in Kankakee. So the front is sort of sliding down the lake and it will continue to pull southward. But this unstable air mass is with us pretty much for the next 24 hours. So we can't rule out an early morning sprinkle tomorrow or an isolated shower or thunderstorm as the front sags down to the south. You can see uh, there are showers and thunderstorms well to the north 
through central Wisconsin, stretching back north of Minneapolis. Also downstate, we've got some showers and thunderstorms where we really saw the temperatures light up. Uh, in the afternoon, we got into the 80s in some spots down there, and that triggered a few thunderstorms. So early tomorrow morning, a few sprinkles right along the state line north and west of Chicago is what we expect. The next disturbance pulls through here and as it sags down to the south of us, a few spotty showers through northwest Indiana or the southern counties. So if you're south and west of Chicago, an afternoon isolated shower is possible. If rain does develop, it'll move real quick and shouldn't cause much of a problem at all. Tomorrow's daytime highs will once again be in the mid to upper 70s. Should feel real nice around here. 80s back to the west of us. We're not going to be extremely warm, but definitely a pleasant afternoon expected. 54 tonight, cool in the Chicago area area. Southwest winds, they'll be northwesterly uh, before the weekend is out. Uh, broken cloud cover for the early morning hours. If you've got activities across the area, only a few sprinkles expected well to the north of Chicago. By the afternoon, we're back to the 70s. It's going to be a real beautiful afternoon with just an isolated risk of thunderstorms, a mix of sun and clouds across the area. Sunday is the sunny day of the weekend. Now we thought it was going to be a little bit warmer. The front pushes down to the south. It gives us a lot more sunshine, but temperatures like likely in the low to mid 70s and not reaching the 80 degree mark. Instead, we'll push the warmth to Monday. Showers and thunderstorms this day. In fact, they could be severe at times, so we're keeping a really close eye on Monday's forecast. For Tuesday, showers come in, but look at the temperatures going down to below the seasonal average. We're going to cool it off into the 60s for both uh, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Low to mid 70s Thursday and Friday. Temperatures should heat up. We'll have the 10-day trend and show you that coming up a little bit later tonight. Also, lake levels. We've been talking about how wet this spring is, you guys, and the lake levels are actually up. So we'll explain that. We'll have that report before the end of the newscast tonight. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Another pirate movie, just what you wanted. It's going to be coming to a movie theater uh, next year. We'll tell you why we have a feeling that you won't be seeing Johnny Depp in this one, though, and the boy who grew up to become prom queen. How a joke turned into something much bigger. A Chicago police officer goes on trial Monday, accused of beating a female bartender. What we've learned about his possible defense strategy just might surprise you. Kramer turns on the charm. I'm not going to be very pleasant to be around. Now that's impossible. <laughs> on the next Seinfeld. Tonight at 11.05 on Fox Chicago. The story of an American commercial ship captain held hostage by Somalian pirates will be coming to the big screen. That tops our news across America. Columbia Pictures says it bought the rights to the life story of Richard Phillips. Phillips offered himself as a hostage, you'll recall, in exchange for the release of his crew. After several days on a lifeboat under the gun, the Navy rescued him. No word on who gets the leading role on this one or when production will begin, but he looks a little bit like Sean Connery. An openly gay student at a high school in Hollywood, California, was voted prom queen. Sergio Garcia says the whole thing started off as a joke, but it turned into a discussion about gender roles and teen popularity. When the votes were counted, Garcia was crowned this year's prom queen. He says he just plans to be himself and have a good time with the title. A century-old American flag turned up inside a school in Wisconsin. This one has just 45 stars, one for each state in the Union back in 1897. Utah was only a year old at the time, and Oklahoma, New Mexico, Arizona, Alaska, and Hawaii, not even states yet. Firefighters found the flag inside the steeple of a school in Milwaukee after a fire. The school plans to restore and display the flag. It's been two years since the video you're about to see shook Chicago's police department. An off-duty officer caught on tape. We've learned his defense could include blaming the bartender. Our special report on the upcoming trial, it's next. And remember all that snow we complained about during the winter? Turns out it's done some good. Amy Freeze follows the circle of life, if you will. <laughs> and later, he's trying to shed his playboy image. England's Prince Harry gets serious in New York City. This is the Civic Value Package. It has a lower true cost of ownership than its competition, which can help save you money down the road on things like insurance and maintenance. It's also remarkably fuel efficient. And at only $149 a month, the name Value Package just makes a lot of sense. Uh, both kinds. Go to Edmunds.com for an independent report on the true cost to own a Civic. And then check out the affordable leases and low financing you'll find at your Honda dealer. There's a great place just around the corner that offers you more. Excuse me, 
Yeah. Ma'am, how is the Jewel Osco Big Relief price cut helping you? I can afford another bag of groceries. That's a relief. I'm bringing home the money we save, and it's a big relief. It helps a lot. We've cut prices up to 20% on thousands of the items you shop for every day with the same great quality and service. So what did you get with the Big Relief price cut? Pasta, laundry detergent, spaghetti sauce, coffee. I filled up my cart. <laughs> price relief is just around the corner at Jewel Osco. Now is the best time to buy all wood beds and complete bedroom packages at Value City Furniture. Prices for a complete package start at just $6.99. All wood queen beds from just $1.99. Our warehouses and showrooms are packed with special purchases, factory direct orders, and many more special buys. You must come prepared to buy because there's never been a better time to save. Value City Furniture, celebrating our 12th big Chicagoland Superstore. Now open in Gertie Mills. Life is full of choices, like choosing the people who help you along the way with the small stuff, the big stuff, and the important stuff. That's where American Family Insurance comes in. They'll get to know you before anything happens, so you'll receive the best care if something happens. Good choice. For over 80 years, American Family Insurance, the family you choose. American Family Insurance. She doesn't believe in snoozing or losing. She knows at Kohl's Super Saturday Sale, she'll find over 100 early bird specials between 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. She'll get early deals on bras, fine and sterling silver jewelry, 50 to 60% off sandals, savings on Junior's fashions, and 50 to 60% off men's in Missy's Apartment 9. Wake up early and get to Kohl's Super Saturday Sale starting at 7 a.m. Set your alarm. Kohl's, expect great things. Alderman Carruthers indicted. Good Day Chicago spoke with him first. How are you doing? Well, uh, these are some serious allegations, and certainly I um, want to treat them very seriously. Asking the questions. The papers are saying that you, you wore a wire for a year. Any comment on that at all? No, no comment on that. You want answered. Good Day Chicago asking the questions. Thorn has come up to haunt Derek Rose from accusations of grade changes to another student taking the SATs for him. Tonight's question, who is responsible? One possible answer tonight on the 10. I'm Lauren Cohn, also on the 10. More problems for Drew Peterson, what a judge decided today. And plus a new insurance law that may affect how you cover your children. And the joke is out, the business that's beating the economic crisis. We will see you at 10. It's a videotape seen around the world, and we showed it to you first. Now Chicago police officer Anthony Abate is just days away from trial, accused of beating a barmaid half his size. Craig Wall previews the trial and why some say Abate might be better off just making a deal. We first showed you this dramatic video more than two years ago. It shows a drunken off-duty Chicago police officer beating a barmaid. A security camera caught the incident at Jesse's Shortstop Inn. Anthony Abadi is charged with the beating. Carolina Obrica is the barmaid who got the beating. She says because she stopped serving him. It stays in your head actually to the end of your life. You're not able to forget about that. Two weeks later, Chicago police got another blow. The city's police superintendent, Phil Klein, resigned. Leaving during these times of challenge makes my decision even more difficult. Cook County prosecutors originally charged Abadi only with battery for his part in the February 19, 2007 beating. When we aired the tape a month later, prosecutors upped the charge to a felony aggravated battery and arrested Abadi at his north side home. At one time, both sides were close to reaching a plea bargain. It fell through because it did not include probation, something the defense wanted at the time. Now, Abadi's trial is scheduled to begin on June 1st. I think that he should strongly be considering a plea, um, given what everyone has seen on that video. That's despite the recent verdict in another high-profile police misconduct case that was also caught on camera. A judge found the Chicago police officers charged in the Jefferson Tap case not guilty. Some legal experts say Abadi should not put too much stock in that verdict. I wouldn't be so emboldened by that. Um, the entire world saw that video and um, there's 
not much room for ambiguity in that video. Not much has been said about a body's case since last May. That's when his attorney asked for and got a gag order. So we looked through the court file and found a few potential surprises that may happen at trial. In a document filed just last month, a body's attorney says his client may testify and he may also claim self-defense. I don't think anyone, any rational person watching that video could ever find self-defense. Daniel Smith grew up in a family of Chicago cops and has written a book called Behind the Stars of the Chicago Police Department. He thinks most police officers are hoping for a guilty verdict. I think that the Chicago Police Department as a whole, the individual rank and file officers, would probably prefer a guilty verdict versus a non-guilty verdict. That way they can just, it's guilty, boom, let's move on. No matter the verdict, Smith believes one of the biggest challenges for the police department is getting past the tape and getting people to stop equating one bad apple with the other 13,000 officers on the department. Craig Wall, Fox Chicago News. According to his attorney, a body has never been disciplined since joining the Chicago Police Department in 1994. A body faces 15 felony counts. He could serve five years in prison if convicted. So much to do, so little time. Illinois lawmakers under pressure tonight. Yeah, a big budget deficit and ethics reform. We'll talk with one of the lawmakers now trying to race to beat the clock. Also ahead, a black history pioneer tells Chicago students to reach for the stars. And he knows a little something about that. Still to come on the weather watch tonight. It's an almost perfect weekend around here. Temperatures will be mild. Just a few wrinkles to talk about. We come back the best day of the weekend and also the neighborhood outlook. I'll have that forecast next. Fox Chicago News is brought to you by Lowe's. I like this one. Spring Meadow. Green is very calming. It's amazing how paint can transform a room. I love this color. Come to Lowe's for high quality Valspar paint. You can even get eight ounce samples to find the color that's right for you. All at our everyday low prices guaranteed. Lowe's, let's build something together. The wait oh boy. is up <laughs> for the funniest comedy of the summer. Cool. Oh, brother. Time Magazine raves. Disney Pixar's Up is a triumph. <laughs> See the right man. I take responsibility. Isn't it a mistake? We have to get ourselves out of this mess. You shake your head immediately. That's not part of this. We're discussion. not going to just tell one side. Sunday at nine on Fox Chicago. Here's your picture of the day. A reporter hauled off during a president presidential press conference. What did she say that got her carried away? This new on the ten. Anti-gambling activists, including three experts in gambling addiction, are warning Governor Quinn not to sign a bill allowing video poker in Illinois. Among those against the proposals is Tim Kelly of South Carolina Center for Gambling yeah, Studies. He says Carolina banned video poker after finding it ravaged poor gamers who got addicted to the fast-paced, low-priced gambling and put themselves further into poverty. If this is done, the governor will live to regret it because I believe he will find that this is a, a way perhaps to close the loop in the short run, but it's done on the backs of the people in a way that will come back to haunt him. Governor Quinn's office says tonight the governor is not committed to the idea of video poker, but also says it's a possible option to help close the budget shortfall. This Sunday marks the scheduled end of the spring legislative session in Springfield, and there still are a number of issues on the table. Including that video poker. Joining us on the phone from Springfield, Republican State Senator Matt Murphy, who represents Palatine. How are you doing, Senator Murphy? Doing great, guys. Thanks for having me on. So are you in business right now, or are you going to go past Sunday, or are you going to be able to wrap things up by Sunday? Well, we I think we'll be done Sunday for the time being. Unfortunately, even though Rob Blagojevich is gone, the dysfunction down here seems to linger. I, the, the, the best bet right now is that we'll pass a budget that's not a full year's budget. And that, in essence, we'll be punting. The leaders down here will punt and come back in January. And uh, I suspect the Democrats will probably try and raise taxes then. You're not, you're not in favor of raising the, the state income tax, I take it. I am in, a, in an economy like this with unemployment around 10%. Uh, the governor's tax hike is going to cost more Illinoisans their jobs. So where do you get I, the I, revenue I think it's from? A if you don't raise taxes, where do you propose getting the revenue from? 
we can eliminate the tax hike proposal, offset that by cuts. I've gone through the budget. We can make the cuts. They're not all easy. They're not all fat, but it's better than raising taxes and costing more Illinoisans their jobs. Well, if you say Illinoisans have tightened their budgets and they've experienced layoffs, oftentimes when people are in those tight times is when they depend even more on the services that municipalities and the state uh, is there to provide for them, you know, whatever those may be. If you're going to provide less and they're going to be hurtful cuts, how are you, how's that going to help those who are in bad shape already? Well, most of what we would have to cut are new programs or program expansions. We can fund the basic services and have a responsible government. Governor Quinn came out with what he called his doomsday budget, which frankly had cartoonish kind of cuts. It was Blagojevich-style scare tactics that uh, aren't really reflective of what we would have to do to balance the budget without raising taxes. Uh, it, is a, it is a much more responsible looking budget to, 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 to cut rather than raise taxes. And we can do it without having the type of hurtful cuts that the governor warned. Senator Murphy, thanks for being here like you guys out in Springfield. We don't have my enough pleasure, time. Guys. Okay, thanks. and we can't stop our clock. We hope yeah. we don't have to on Sunday night. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. A government watchdog group calls the ethics reform package coming out of Springfield bait and switch. On a taping of Fox Chicago Sunday, Andy Shaw, the Better Government Association, says that lawmakers who pushed for the creation of an independent reform commission ended up supporting legislation that only looks like reform. Every piece of reform they passed has a giant loophole so they can get around it. Worst of all, it doesn't take effect until after the next election cycle. What they should Shaw have says if lawmakers truly wanted reform, they would have taken a vote on every recommendation from the Governor's Reform Commission, as is. We also taped a segment with Andy about his television career, and you can go to MyFoxChicago.com to see three behind-the-scenes stories Andy Shaw never told anyone on, uh, on TV before. Pretty entertaining. The full Fox Chicago Sunday airs Sunday morning at 8.30. Chicago students got a lesson in reaching for the stars today from someone who knows exactly what he's talking about in the star department. Dr. Bernard Harris was the first African-American astronaut to walk in space. That was in 1995. He told his story to students today at San Miguel Elementary School, part of the astronauts' dream team nationwide tour. Harris hopes his success will give kids a powerful push toward an interest in science and math, the key ingredients, he says, in any technology field. Up in the sky right now. Been pretty chilly all week long, at least for May standards. Well, it's kind of cool, nice earlier today. But Amy Freeze is saying the weekend's going to be even better. She'll be back in just a few minutes. Plus, the royal visit. Prince Harry showing he's all grown up in the Big Apple. Well, the young Blackhawks grew up during the playoffs. The Hawks discuss what they learned about playoff hockey and playoff beards. And it's another pitcher's duel at Wrigley between the Dodgers and Cubs. Find out who emerges with the well-deserved victory next in sports. Major League Soccer is on My 50 Chicago, home of the Chicago Fire. The Fire hosts FC Dallas Sunday at 2 on My 50 Chicago, Cable 8. appreciation sale. We're saying thanks with an extra 20% off on top of great sale prices when you use your store card. On now at Carson. Ever feel like it's just better to blend in and go with the flow? Neither do we. The Mitsubishi Lancer, engineered to be different with twin paddle shifters to reignite your passion for driving. And Lancer earned IntelliChoice's excellent value in a sports sedan over Mazda, over Subaru, and even over BMW. Mitsubishi Lancer, it's different for a reason. Right now, get an online Lancer starting at just over 13 grand after factory rebate. When we bought flooring for this room, we got flooring for this room free. And this room was free too. It's a first from Empire. Buy flooring for one room and get two rooms free. We offer quality flooring and you get to shop at home. Plus we install next day with no payments for one year. Don't miss this incredible offer. Buy one, get two rooms free. Call Empire today. 800-588-2300 Empire. Today. 
Watch Good Day Chicago and win a great stay in Miami. To play Catch Mark's Forecast weekday mornings from 5 to 10. When you see the phrase of the day, text it to Fox32 or go to MyFoxChicago.com to enter. Grand prize is a family trip for four to beautiful Miami. Compliments of Visit Florida. You'll travel Southwest Airlines and stay at the luxurious Courtyard by Marriott Miami Beach Oceanfront. Plus, enjoy a once-in-a-lifetime encounter with the Dolphins at the Miami Seaquarium. Watch Good Day Chicago and win from Visit Florida. It's Carson's Customer Appreciation Mattress Sale. Save 40% on every Sealy and Simmons mattress set. Plus, save an extra 10% when you use your store card. And get free delivery only at Carson's. Come to the right place. Welcome back on the Weather Watch tonight. What a Friday night. A great view of the Sears Tower tonight. Long Lake uh, Michigan Avenue. Everything all lit up. And uh, as we get into the weekend, things are looking pretty decent. Only a few isolated chances for showers around here. Let's get started with the weekend weather. It's going to be cooler lakefront pretty much all weekend. So if you're downtown, expect temperatures to be just in the upper 60s and low 70s. Mild temperatures, so about what we would expect this time of year. And a slight chance for isolated thunderstorms here or there. Low 70s for Skokie. The loop tomorrow, mid 70s. We'll take upper 60s and low 70s for Gurney and Lake Forest. McHenry 72 and Crystal like an early morning sprinkle is possible well to the north, but as we get into the afternoon, spotty showers are possible west and also to the south of Chicago. Tenley Park tomorrow 76 for you, Joliet the same, and upper 70s for the extreme southwest suburbs. And now Gary will have low 70s, Valparaiso 73, and Michigan City 70 degrees. The forecast for the weekend, Saturday's mostly cloudy. We get the warm, uh, warm air in here, especially inland, a high of 75, and then as we get further into the weekend, we get pure sunshine. So Saturday night, a few clouds, but then by Sunday, a lot of sunshine and temperatures are cooler in the low 70s. So a decent weekend for us. If you're looking for the sunniest day of the weekend, it certainly is going to be Sunday. And if you are lakefront this weekend, you may have noticed riding your bike or running along Lake Michigan, something is a little different. The water levels are higher than they were a year ago. Now, rainfall in Chicago and all over the Midwest has been far above normal for more than a year now. And all of this is very very good news for Lake Michigan. The evidence is showing, and in fact, if you walk along the lakefront, that the water levels are higher than they were at this point last year. Kurt Hedegar from the Shad Aquarium explains that as water levels rise, there are immediate benefits for the fish habitat. It's a good thing. Um, the, the fish will have, the, this affects shallow water areas. Fish will have better breeding grounds. While rising levels can have a huge impact on the overall health of the lake over time, the rise doesn't secure the future of the lake indefinitely. This is a cyclical thing. It's been shown over the history of the lakes since they've been keeping records of them that every 15 to 20 years lake levels fall and rise. Just two years ago, lake levels dropped to within three inches of a record low set in 1964. The reason for the recent rise can be found in climate data. Two snowy years back to back in Chicago and an extremely wet spring. It's important to remember, though, that rain that falls over Chicago drains mostly into the Mississippi River and not into Lake Michigan. But Chicago's wet weather comes from a larger regional pattern, which does affect the lake's drainage basin. And it's that wet weather pattern that has replenished Lake Michigan. Even with rising lake levels, urban runoff and water usage still impact water quality in Lake Michigan. And Hedegar warns that conservation should continue. We were at some record lows, um, and now is a good time for us to practice this and realize that the lakes are very vulnerable. Some of those water conservation tips that you could do are minimize your fertilization, reduce usage, and do your very best to keep water clean as it drains into the local storm drains. Uh, the lake is still about eight inches below its long-term average, but over the next several months heading into autumn, our wet weather pattern that we're expecting could bring the lake levels up another four inches. You can check out this story and a whole lot of information about, about the lake's water levels online at myfoxchicago.com. Just click on weather. Thank you, Amy. Lakes have needed the, the water, so some people happy to see it. The Prince and the Big Apple. The son of Prince Charles and the late Princess Diana is in New York tonight. His first official visit to New York City. It's a whirlwind. Prince Harry paid his respects at Ground Zero today, laying a wreath near the site of the memorial. Harry has also visited a garden dedicated to the 67 British citizens who died on 9-11. It is a great privilege for me to be here today in this beautiful garden right in the heart of New York City. 
My family is so proud to be so closely associated with it and its purpose in honoring the memory of the 67 British people who died here on September the 11th, 2001. Thank you. The Prince also stopped by a New York firehouse across from Ground Zero. He'll be in New York through tomorrow. His plans for Saturday, visiting a veterans hospital and playing a game of polo. Where do they do that in New York? Probably, I'm sure they have a polo field somewhere, Just right? Just outside they, of New York. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Upstate somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Meanwhile, we like the uh, little ball that goes up in the air and not on the ground. Yes. Uh, well, you know, if it goes on the ground and scores a run, that's fine, too. Okay. All but right. yeah, that, <laughs> Whatever it, it takes. It's all good so long as they win. With all the wild goings on at Wrigley this week, it's time the Cubs settle down, focus on baseball, and find a way to beat the Dodgers. They did that this afternoon as Ted Lilly bested L.A.'s Chad Billingsley in a pitcher's duel. Lilly allows just one run, and it comes off the bat of Matt Kemp here in the top of the, of the seventh. Barely reaches the basket, but it's good enough for the one nothing Dodgers lead. The Cubs respond with a pair in the bottom of the seventh, though. Coy Hill at the plate, and get out! It does. The solo shot to right ties it. And later in the inning, bases juiced with one out for Kosuke Fukudome. Finally! Someone comes through with a man in scoring position. His sack fly scores Jake Fox. That's the game winner as the bullpen closes out the 2-1 victory for Lilly and the Cubs. It's just fun going out there and, and um, getting into a, into a game like that and, and you know trying to you know trying to keep up with uh, with the opposing pitcher and and, um, and having a competitive game and 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 in the end coming out on top feels good. Well, the White Sox lose one outfielder to injury, but get another one back. Carlos Quinton has been placed on the 15-day disabled list with that nagging pain in his left heel, now diagnosed as plantar fasciitis. Dwayne Wise, who separated his shoulder April 13th, making a diving catch, has been activated to take his spot. White Sox wrapping up their road trip in Kansas City this weekend. Clayton Richard is getting plenty of run support tonight. Sox already have a 1-0 lead when Josh Fields knocks in two more with a double off Ryan Bannister in the second. It'd be 4 nothing after 2, and the Sox are pouring it on in the 6 as well. A.J. Przinski's double to right sends Jim Tomey trotting home. That caps a 6-run inning. The Sox go on to win it by a final of 11-2. to two. Well, The Blackhawks were back at the United Center, not preparing for a Stanley Cup Finals game, but rather preparing for the offseason, cleaning out their lockers, putting a cap on their turnaround season. Each playoff game was a learning experience for the young Blackhawks, who grew and matured as the season went on. Or did they? Not many guys grew up in here, I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> but, um, yeah, ho hockey-wise, yeah, playoff hockey is so different. I mean, it's so hard. Um, you know, it's so demanding on your body and, and mentally it's so hard and, um, you know, for, for a young team to go through that, uh, for a bunch of 20 year old guys to go through that early in their career, it, it's going to help, it's going to help down the long run. Well, the Bears have been very busy locking up versatile defensive lineman Israel Adonijay through the 2011 season. His two-year contract extension is worth a reported $7 million. And they snatched up linebacker Pisa Tonoisamoa, inking the Rams' leading tackler of a year ago to a one-year deal. The Bears also signed seven of their nine draft picks to contracts today. Day six at Roland Garros brings the first big upset. Hungary's Agnes Xavi eliminates women's third seed Venus Williams Xavi. Hammers a Williams serve down the line for a winner and then on match point after a rally, Xavi forces Williams to dump it into the net. Williams has twice as many unforced errors as winners as she's bounced by Xavi 6-0, Oops. Yeah, oops is right. Thank you. Sure. Now the results of tonight's right or wrong. It stems from the revelation of a so-called clout list of pr prospective students, say that 10 times fast, mm -hmm. at the University of Illinois. We wanted to know if you could pull spring strings Say that. See, I gave it to you. We need to be on the clout list, apparently. To get, <laughs> if you could pull strings to get your child into a good school, would you? Here's what you tell us. One viewer says, if I knew that my son was capable of getting a degree at the school, then I would do everything in my power to allow him entry. A differing point of view says, I would think twice about trying to pull strings. And, and finally, <laughs> someone we're doing who this says, one well. <laughs> what parent wouldn't want to help their child do better? Now the tally from our unscientific poll, right or wrong, as a parent, you would pull strings to get your child into a good school. Here's what you tell us. 81% of you say that's right. You would use clout if you had it. 90% say that's wrong. That's the wrong thing to do. We thank you for letting us know what you think.
General Motors is gearing up for bankruptcy, but the timing could be a lot better now. And a cliffhanger for Chrysler. Our Money Watch segment is next. Economic relief. Let's talk comic relief and why these clubs are doing so well. I'm Byron Harlan. That story a little bit later. Hey, Chicago. Here's a look at what's going on in sports this weekend. As the weather heats up, so does the competition in the National League. This Saturday at 3, the L.A. Dodgers are in town to take on the Chicago Cubs. The checkered flag is almost down. Catch the final NASCAR race on Fox Chicago Sunday at 12.30. Then at 10, you can watch all the week's sporting highlights on The Final Word. This weekend's sports preview is driven locally by Kia. The power to surprise. Kia presents the $14,200 Spectra versus the $14,200 Corolla. The Spectra gets 30 miles per gallon. The $14,200 Corolla does not. The Spectra has a class-leading warranty. The Corolla does not. The Spectra has a five-star frontal crash rating. The Corolla does not. The Kia Spectra, with features they can't beat at a price they can't match. There's really nothing to compare. Now starting at 11.2 after 3,000 cash back. The world's top drivers rev it up at Dover. Spring Cup Racing, presented by McDonald's, Sunday, 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 Pacific. The following contains graphic images of families saving money. Six flags, more flags, more fun. <laughs> Cutting back on family expenses? That doesn't mean cutting back on fun. In fact, with a Six Flags Season Pass, it's fun to save all year. Come to Six Flags again and again from the second you buy a pass all the way through Fright Fest, all for one fun low price. Just $69.99. And it includes our free water park. That's two parks for one price. Best of all, it pays for itself in less than two visits. So the more fun you have, the more you save. Plus, get four free tickets for friends, over $500 of in-park savings on food and fun, and free admission to all Six Flags theme parks. Just go to SixFlags.com and click to buy your season pass. Then print your season passes from home. Who knew saving money could be so much fun? Get your Six Flags season passes now at SixFlags.com or Jewel Osco. Hurry up or ends June 7th. More flags, more fun, Six Flags. When it comes to confidence, you got to believe in yourself and your team. And you don't ever, ever let anything get in your way. Your local Chevy dealers are building confidence with Chevy's Payment Protection Plan. Payment protection for up to nine months if you lose your job. We've got you covered. And remember, don't let anything get in your way. See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers today. We're building confidence one customer at a time. The Fox Business Channel confirms General Motors will file for bankruptcy on Monday. Despite last-ditch efforts, GM could not reach a deal with bondholders to avoid seeking protection. But GM did reach a new deal with the United Auto Workers Union, 74% of its membership ratifying concessions that will reduce labor costs by more than a billion dollars a year. The new deal ends the possibility of any strike through the year 2015. Union leadership says it didn't have much of a choice. General Motors is going to have a clean balance sheet uh, when this is over, and we feel like that the uh, stock should be worth a lot more a lot quicker. Right now, we recognize the value of zero. Bankruptcy attorneys say the agreement will help GM's case move through court quicker. Some predict it could be in and out of bankruptcy court within 90 days. Meantime, Chrysler is already in bankruptcy court. Today, attorneys tried to convince a judge to approve a plan to sell most of the company to Fiat. The judge was expected to okay this deal. Several state pension and construction funds might fight the deal. Chrysler claims any delay could push Fiat to back out of the deal. The Italian car company wants the agreement wrapped up by June 15th. Well, thanks for joining us at 9. There is more news coming up. Lauren Cohn is here to look at what's new on the 10. Jeff and Robin, here's what we're working on for the 10. A bull in the bullseye, a promising future for Bulls guard Derek Rose, but it's his past that has him at the center of a college hoops probe. Tonight, what his former teammate is saying about it. A course decision on an appeal filed by Drew Peterson. And Southwest Airlines gets pet friendly. What 75 bucks will get your pooch? Plus, an investigation is underway into the city's parking meter fiasco. The 10 starts in two. 
Closed captioning on Fox Chicago News is brought to you by Luna. Free flooring. It's time to love your floors. Luna's free flooring sale won't last. Call today. 773-202. Luna. Enjoy one of life's little pleasures. Yo Play has a sweetly satisfying taste and creamy texture that you can't resist. Yo Play in 25 delicious flavors. It is so good. Tired of nighttime breathing problems? Here's the solution. Is it a bandage, you ask? No. It's famous drug-free Breathe Right. Ingenious flexible strips that fit your nose to gently open your nasal passages mm. for up to 31% more airflow. Wow! You'll breathe better, so you'll sleep better. Small strip, big relief. Bright idea. Breathe better, sleep better, breathe right.